All righty, you're live. Okay, right on. Hello, 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 my brothers and sisters, my relatives out there. Welcome to the Native Wanus um, uh, Power Hours. Hang on, I'm just getting things set up here. And so uh, thank you for bearing with us. And uh, um, here we are. Cool. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Native Wanda's Power Hour. Uh, we are on um, 155. Believe that. So this Power Hour is sponsored by the Urban uh, Indian Health Institute, Seattle Indian Health Board. Um, let me see here. I've got a few things I'm working out here. And I just want to make sure I get this. So uh, here we go. Welcome. Cool. My name is Gene Tagaban. Um, and my Tlingit name is Gael. I'm of the Duck Danton, Raven Freshwater Sockeye Clan from Huna, Alaska. Child of a Wishkaton, Eagle Shark Clan from Wakwan in Juneau, Alaska. Um, Cherokee Tlingit and Filipino. And today, that's a little bit of who I am. We're with the Native Wellness Institute and uh, our power hours. We put these together as a as a response to the pandemic that went out and uh you know we knew that traumatized people would be re-traumatized during this time so we wanted to uh come up with a solution how to bring that health that wellness and and possibility inspiration to our people and with that um you know here we are again we're on like week 60 or yeah week 64 and we've been going on and we're going to continue to go on with uh, our programs and so this month is uh, um, pride, pride month, you know, and it's, uh, and so we're going to, we got a, a relative on here, we got AC on here, and, and I'll let you introduce yourself, and uh, uh, yeah, how you doing, man? Doing good, doing good, I've got my first cup of coffee down, so I'm ready to go. Oh, good. Uh, my name is AC Ramirez, Taino Higuayagua. Uh, I'm Bohuti, and I live in Portland, Portland, Oregon. I just got moved into my new place, and I'm excited to uh, be here talking about Pride Month. Oh, right on, right on. And just to let people know, I just want to acknowledge that as well. I'm here on the, uh, the territories of the Coast Salish peoples and the land of the Puyallup here in Ruston, Washington. I just want to acknowledge, make acknowledgements to, to our people as we're right now, we're just making acknowledgements, you know, and just celebrating this Pride, Pride Month, you know, and AC's with us and, and uh, just to, to chat about this. And then next week, we're going to have a whole panel, a whole panel on, and I think AC's going to facilitate that panel with uh, um, our relatives. And so, um, Man, it's it's good to see you and and how you how you doing and and what have you been doing during, during this month? Well, I started out this month trying to get moved in, so that's that's been my my main focus. And um, because you know we're still in a pandemic, we're, yeah. we're still you know getting folks immunized and those who can be immunized and want to be immunized, and um, it feels like we're on the brink of sort of opening the world back up again. Um, but I imagine it's going to be really bumpy the way that it was bumpy kind of in the beginning of the pandemic, figuring pieces out. So a lot of the standard pride events uh, that would normally be happening are, uh, some of them are happening, but they're, um, you know, virtual or um, partly in person. So I think a lot of the stuff that I would be attending, um, I, I either can't attend because I was in the middle of my move and it was virtual and I was without Wi-Fi sort of thing. But um, also, you know, it's, there's not a lot of in-person stuff yet. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, I guess, next year when more of that will be happening. 
I was able to have an art show. There's another art show coming up for me um, at the Q Center. Q Center Portland has been doing an amazing job to try um, start the art shows running again over there. So I'll be participating in that. Um, I'll have some art up at uh, Friendly House in Portland coming up soon. So I think that'll be like July and August for those events. Um, but kind of like, you know, finding my bearings and, and figuring out how things are, how, the combination of how things are opening up in the community and how I'm getting moved into my place. I, I've got all my plants set up here, but the reality is, is behind the screen, I have boxes stacked up to the ceiling. So I'm not fully moved in. Well, welcome. Congratulations on, on your move. Um, and so uh, as we have pride, you know, how do you, I mean, finally, it's like there's pride month and, you know, and the recognition of our LGBTQ relatives, two spirit relatives, you know, and, and so many, so many times people um, you know, in, in Indian country too, two spirit or, 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 or LGBTQ relatives. I mean, they were like, we saw them as a gift. They're yeah. a gift, you know, and they had, they had like, they, you know, they brought their own medicine uh, of, of just with their presence of who they were, you know, and now finally we're like, you know, Pride Month is here and there's just more inclusion and, and recognition and, 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 um, and at the same time, there's not. I mean, how, how do you feel about that? I mean, what's your, what's your thoughts? You know, that, that's on the, the list of the gifts of colonialism, right? Um, to go from being honored sacred people to having been um, just torn from, from our, our rightful roles, from our tribal communities. Um, and to feel that I, I have that same feeling that you do, like, you know, things are, are coming around full circle and there's beginning to be recognition because um, there was a, a lot that I think our communities took on um, that were very uh, European mindsets to um, what it meant to be Two-Spirit. And, and to be clear, Two-Spirit is a very a uh, recent term. It was like 1990 in Winnipeg, there was a conference of, of folks that we would now call Two-Spirit um, who came up with this term on how to self-identify because to be Two-Spirit means that uh, you have a, a ceremonial role in your community. You know, you have gifts and you share these gifts with your community and it's different than being, you know, LGBTQ um, and non-native. So if you're native, uh, you can still be LGBTQ and not necessarily identify as Two-Spirit, um, but you can identify as Two-Spirit and not be LGBTQ, see? So there's all that, that nuance in there, but it feels like we have, uh, you know, reclaimed our sacred roles and are also beginning to feel more recognition within our own communities, which is what's important to us. You know, if, if outside of our communities were also recognized, that's fantastic. But if you're gonna talk about, you know, First Nations people, Native American, um, Pacific Islanders, um, we are all grasping on and reclaiming our place and to be welcomed again by our own communities for those of us who have lost that space um, is fantastic. It, it just, it feels like coming home. Right on. I mean, I like that just uh, about coming home, about coming home, you know, and, um, you know, and just for those who are, who are out there, I mean, just, you know, just, just who don't know, what does LGBTQ mean? You know, and you explain a little bit of what two spirit does mean. I mean, yeah. um, you know, and sure, I could, I can, we could talk about this, but there's, there's people out there who still, they don't know what the heck is LGBTQ? What is two spirit? You know, and what is the, I mean, I hear it all over the place. What does it mean? Yeah. So, you know, the, the LGBT acronym 
has grown and grown and grown so that now it is something like, I, I, I'm afraid to say it because I might leave out a letter, but LGBTQIA2S plus. So lesbian, gay, bi, trans, transgender. Um, queer questioning, asexual, and other letters, the, the pluses for those that, that we haven't yet recognized in that acronym, right? And then the two S is two spirit. Two spirit folks are, those are our, 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 our native community members who recognize within themselves that they fall outside the gender binary. So they don't necessarily identify as just male or just female. Um, they may identify as both. It may be very fluid. Um, they may identify as a third gender. Um, many different tribal nations have different uh, traditional words for their folks who, you know, that, that two-spirit is the, the pan-Indian term, right? But the individual tribal nations each have their own words for what they would have called folks like me. Uh, for, you know, in Arawak, we can say Biawaisa, which means two-spirit. Um, I'm sure that there were other words that have been long gone lost mm -hmm. um, for, for my ancestors and for many folks' ancestors as, you know, our, our languages were you know, lost or, or, you know, being reclaimed and it's a mess, but we're doing the work and we're getting, we're getting there in beautiful, beautiful ways. Um, being part of the language project um, for, for myself meant learning that term. I never knew, knew that mm -hmm. term, Biawaisa, right? Yeah. So being able to, to learn that term and to be able to be accepted and, and, to be told, hey, you know, there, there, there were traditional ceremonial roles and, and you know, here, here's how it was. And, and it was funny to hear it because, you know, in my, my whole life I've worked in social services and I've um, participated in, in, I don't even, countless hours of volunteer work in, in my communities. Um, and to see how well and you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's plenty of two-spirit folks who had to battle for custody of their own children because people didn't understand what that was. And so the, the more that we're, we're teaching, like I'm not just out here teaching, I'm out here learning. And I tell you what, my biggest teachers have been the youth. Uh. Boy, have they like brought holy cow, so much information to me that I have been so eternally grateful for. Our I th well, I think part of, I think part of that, that, youth, that youth movement is like there, uh, there's a fearlessness around it. Yeah. There's a fearlessness around it. And if not only the fearlessness, but there's a fierceness about, you know, it's like, okay, here we are. Here we are, you know, and, and, uh, and let's say my generation, heck, uh, and, and yours, I'm, I'm 57, you know, and the advancements and just the, again, the education, the knowledgement and the awareness that's there and the youth are just bringing it out. I mean, just like you said earlier um, in the conversation about, uh, I mean, you're 55, you've been working on this a lot and you're out, you're outgoing and stuff, you know, and, and, um, and then there's the youth what I consider the youth, man, is like anyone in their 20s, you know, on down and, and such, you know, and, and even, hey, man, I'm in that, I'm like even like 35 on down. Those are the youth now. I can yeah. Say that. You know, but there is, there's like this fearlessness in this, you know, about, and like you said, learning so much and just like my hands go up to them, you know, and, and to those youth, eh? You know, and, and, um, and so, um, um, but then there's that that age that's um, I just talked to a friend, and he has a uh, like a middle school um, granddaughter, you know, and even less. I mean, and they're 
and in that age group, I mean, it's hard for them. That's a hard, that's a tough age group. I mean, they're, they're taking a look at who they are and they're identifying who they are, you know, and, and but they're able to start to speak out about it too. You know, any words for them or, or those parents or, or grandparents who are, are with, um, are those ones in their families, those relatives? Absolutely. I think that um, the biggest uh, lesson that I've learned is that we have to listen to the youth. Listen. Um, nobody knows their gender better than, than the person, right? Like, I, I can't come tell you your gender, Gene. Like, yeah. it just doesn't work that way. So when kids are telling us things about their gender or their sexuality, we have to hear that. And, and, and we have to set aside our, our fears about what that means because they know their reality and we've got to be there to back them up and support them and connect them with resources that that sometimes can be difficult to find when we're talking about folks out in more rural areas, um, you know, just hearing our kids, finding those pieces to help support them, and then finding a separate set of supports for ourselves to, to get us through it too. There's a lot of unlearning I've had to do in my life. And I think the last probably 10, 15 years of my life, I have done more to decolonize my mind than my entire lifetime, right? So there's a, a big chunk of learning that happens for us no matter what age we're in. You know, in, in, in some groups of people, I'm, I'm the young one, 55, you're just a baby, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But in, in, in some groups of people, I am absolutely the elder. You know, if, if there are not a lot of people um, who are carrying a language, who are carrying knowledge, who are carrying the medicine, um, who are older than you, 55 can be an elder, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I think as far as, as youth goes, I, I think I use that term loosely because I would say 35 and under, you know, um, because that's where I'm learning so many things from that, that age group and, and really young kids. Cause uh, you know, I have grandkids, you know, my, my oldest is 38 this year, I think. And mm. my youngest is six, but my oldest has three kids who are six and under. Uh, and I'm learning things from my grandkids, things you don't realize until you have grandkids, the, the things that you're going to learn, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, even in Indian country, or we, we see those young ones, too, as those, those young elders. I mean, because they carry that knowledge, you know, and they're just, there's a wisdom there. And it just blows me away. I look at them, and I'm just like going, who the heck are you? Yeah. Who, who the heck are you? You know, and again, they're bringing this, this just uh, higher, you know, deeper awareness with them, you know, and this, this, this fierceness that's with them. You know, you talked about um, just relearning and that we're never too old to relearn, you know, and, and those old belief systems, those belief systems. And how do we decolonize our minds? decolonize our spirits or as I like to say is like how do we re-indigenize our minds re-indigenize our spirits yeah you know I was talking to a friend last night you know and um she grew up in Texas and she grew up with all those uh belief systems about biases racism and and, and you know she never thought uh she's in her 50s now she never thought if you would ask her when she was a kid you know, about uh, homosexuality, gay, gender, um, trans, any of that, she would have just, you know, from her belief systems back then, what she learned from, what she would have just like, just blew you off. She's hardcore Christian, you know, and bringing religion into it, this and that. She was like, oh, it's like, you know, this 
whatever she would say. But as a white woman, she was able to heal. And now she takes a look at where she's at now compared to then. And uh, she's living in Washington and she's lived here for a good chunk of her life now. But she goes, she just says, uh, she says, I had to rethink and reorganize my thinking in my mind and in my heart and my spirit, you know, and, and you know, and saying that I can learn. I can relearn and I can learn to be inclusive and I can learn to truly love, love, not just people or everyone, but just truly discover what love is. Yeah. Now, now she's got a little granddaughter who's coming up and, and, and uh, defines themselves as they, you know, and, uh, and just exploring their whole gender their gender and uh you know she's too young to really know about sexuality but even that word sexuality you know we need to uh be able to talk about it absolutely you know, be able to talk about these things so uh yeah so we're, we're we've come a you know long away in this this area how can uh those uh, how can we be allies? For instance, my wife and I were were, were straight, um, and yet I will in our front house we have this flag actually flying on our flagpole in our front house in our front, you know, our front there. And um, I've actually done I'm a I can marry people. I've done three weddings so far, and two of those weddings were from our, our um, two spirit weddings, you know, and they've uh, and I'm I'm really proud of that. You know, but those, there's a lot of people out there who are wondering, what can I do? How can I be an ally? What can I do to support, you know? And, and how can those who are questioning that be those allies and how can they be support? Yeah, so I think that um, like recognizing that your family member or your friend or whoever it is that you want to support, um, you know, they, they're, they're going to know themselves better than you as far as that goes. Um, to be able to um, educate yourself as much as you can, like to go online and, and just like Google is magic. You can put that stuff in and, and you can learn a lot of stuff. Um, but being able to do that will give you a tiny picture of what your family member or friend is going through and some of the struggles that they might face. I've been fired um, for mm -hmm. being two spirit mm -hmm. and that's legal in my state. Like it's, you know, no cause state. So bye. Um, but it was clear what it was about. Um, you know, it, it, it at the time that I did my, my first adoption, I, I was just told to keep it quiet. Don't say anything. I was single and adopting and, and they just said, yeah, if you just don't say anything, it's not a problem. Now in my state, boy, they're, they're just like, sure. You know, you've got a home and a, and a job and you love children here. <laughs> we've got a kid for you. You know, there, there's so many kids stuck in the system yeah. who need parents. And there's so many people who want to be parents. Why not put them together? Um, but, you know, there's different things, you know, for some folks simply walking home between their job and their house can be a dangerous thing for them. Uh -huh. You know, I, I haven't had to have to deal with that, right? Like I can generally get from place to place without too much problem, but there's a lot of us who can't. So like educating yourself about those pieces that may or may not affect your loved one is gonna be the first piece. And then going to them and asking them, do you, do you have a problem getting back and forth to work? You know, can I offer you a ride? You know, can I game plan with you about how you're gonna get home at you know, midnight when you get off of work and you're walking and I'm concerned about you, 
Because uh, if you never know, they might not tell you. Mm -hmm. They just might be trying to quietly make it home themselves safely. So we don't know until we ask. We don't know until we ask. Yeah. 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 Oh, exactly. Exactly. And that's something I never thought about either. You know, and it's one of those things. I mean, sure, I can hang up these flags. I can like be out there and say I'm supportive, you know, but that's one thing. But actually to like in public to be able to speak, speak out as a man, as a as a man, you know, and, and one thing I do, I want to say, get our, you know, our, our relatives, our brothers out there to, you know, uh, that's, you know, to speak out speak out, you know, because there's a lot of homophobia out there, especially uh, on our reservations yeah. or in the villages. You know, I think that's just a lack, again, that lack of, of fear, lack of um, not knowing. I mean, my dad's generation, my, you know, that his in his 80s now, but um, that whole generation too, what they grew up and learning. But it's about, um, you know, brothers i'm talking to you out there right now we need to see, speak up you know and, and and that's all part of us being that healthy and wellness bringing that wellness out there and i just want to introduce uh again this is gene tagaban i'm here with ac and we're talking about uh, uh pride month celebrating pride month we're at the native wellness institute um we're sponsored by the um seattle indian health board Program 64, number 355 here. And uh, so welcome, welcome, welcome and again. Hey, so um, so what now? Here we are. What can we what can we look forward to as far as like moving forward? And uh, and yeah. So um, you know, there there's we could talk for for days or weeks on um, the struggles, but I absolutely want to hold up the triumphs and the, yeah, yeah. the joys, you know, the joys, um, you know, I, I, I have a, a, a couple of friends, a uh, couple of guys who are married who just adopted a 12 year old boy, hmm. something they, they couldn't have done, you know, like 15 years ago but they've done it and oh they're such a beautiful family like i'm i'm going to cry here just talking about it um the kid has been through so much and to see that he has two dads that love him so much no matter what is it like that's every like everybody should have that i should have that i need two dads but that's a whole nother story <laughs> you know <laughs> like, to to be able to see you know when i, I i'm a, a wheelchair user Mm -hmm. When I'm rolling down your street and I see that flag up there, I'm not kidding. Like that, that brings me comfort to know, uh, you know that I want to see um, fewer signs, you know, whether political or social signs, you know, there's so much negativity out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm pushing that away and I'm welcoming all the positive. Um, when you put your flag up, uh, you can do, you can put your flag up in places that you might not realize. You can put your flag up in the locker room when, when people are just trash talking, you know, to spirit folks or, or trash talking women, you know, we don't need to be trash talking anybody. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can gently educate them or you can absolute say, hey, that's not, that's not how we talk here. You know, that's not happening here. Um, so, you know, that, that's just another way to hang that ally flag up mm -hmm. is to interrupt folks, to gently educate them. And, um, you know, they, they may not be open to that education piece right now but you're going to do it and your brothers are going to do it and more people are going to do it. And, and there's going to be a shift in that person's life. Hopefully that shift will be, you know, I, I guess I was wrong about this and, you know, they might have a, a son or a grandson that comes out as gay and they realize they've got to change their mind. Uh, or 
maybe that shift doesn't happen for them. And, and honestly, I feel bad for those folks because if that shift doesn't happen, <laughs> my child is knocking at the door. If that shift doesn't happen, you know, and they're carrying around that anger and hatred inside of them, um, that that's a, a poison. That's bad medicine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they can't, you know, they don't want to be um, carrying that. That that makes you toxic in inside. I'm I'm talking about physically and spiritually. That makes you toxic. Mm -hmm. So we want to educate them, and we want them to to shift in their mind. But if they can't, then the more they're hearing from you and other people, um, the better the more likely they are to shift. And if they're not going to shift, they're going to stop that kind of locker room talk. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to stop doing it, you know, on the work site, they're going to stop behaving that way to folks like me. Yeah. You know, I, didn't, I never really thought about that. I and mean, again, my wife and I, we have on our flagpole in front, we have a, um, this exact flag right here. It says peace out there. And, um, we never, I ne to be honest with you, I never thought about that. If some uh, a relative was being harassed or they felt threatened or stuff like that, and they, and they saw that flag, that they know that they can come up to my door. Yeah. And they can like say, hey, I can, I need help. I need a ride. Or, you know, and they, or, you know, just because they feel threatened or whatever it is, you know, and, and my wife and I, we would just go, yeah, yeah. Okay. What, you know? And so I never thought about that, that that's, that, that, that's actually uh, a way that, you know, people can see is like, there's a safe house. Yeah. There's a place I can go, you know. And, and even applying that sticker to your front door, you know, for that person or, who's got to walk home at midnight and they're being followed and they're scared. Yeah. Or even know? to your, even to your car. I mean, it's like, you know, and, and uh, yep. put it on your car, you know, and those things too. And so again, I didn't think about that. And so it's like something I'm going to be, I am from this point on, I'm more aware of that as well. And, you know, and I know, you know, again, as a man going into the locker room talk and I teach men male engagement, you know, and how to get men in, involved to stop the domestic violence, sexual assault, the hurt and harm against our LGBTQ relatives uh, and, uh, and themselves and, and other, you know, other men. Um, and so when I walk into a room now, people know what I stand for. And so just with my presence, the chatter and the, the talk stops. You know, because they know that, okay, here's a guy who, who you know, he won't, he, he'll call us out. He'll call us out on that. Yeah. And they're going to want to carry themselves in that same way with, you know, integrity and kindness and, and compassion, the more yeah, yeah, that they're yeah. surrounded by it. You don't want to be the only guy doing the locker room talk and everyone giving you side eye, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and so those are just a few things that we can, you know, that can be done and uh, that our communities can do, you know. And so anything, what, what else, what other thoughts do you have that you'd like to share with uh, people out there? Um, I think there's a, a lot of ways in which we um, can be invited to thrive because as native people across the board, um, we're, we're applauded for our resilience because we are resilient. We're still here, right? Yeah. Um, we're, we're here by, by miracle and blessing of our ancestors and um, a, a lot of reasons, but, but it's a miracle we are here. So I, you know, I, I have a, a tagline on my email that says um, that Resilience is a colonial mindset and a weaponized word that puts the onus on indigenous people to survive the continued onslaught of barriers put in place that prevent us from thriving. I resist. I want to thrive. I want my community to thrive. And so, 
you know, resilience is one of those words that in community, it means a lot to me. You're resilient and I'm resilient. Together we are resilient and we support the next generation and we continue. Um, but outside of our community, I think it's a pat on the head. Great job you did. Yeah. Let's see what other barrier we can throw in place, you know? So <laughs> I want the barriers brought down. I want the barriers brought down outside the Native community, but also within the community. Um, I want the lateral violence to stop. Um, I, I want us to hold up each other as sacred. And I think that um, our opinion as two spirit people is oftentimes discounted. Yeah. And if, and if you see that happening, you know, if, if we're not at the table, find out why, you know, don't, don't let somebody tell you, well, we invited some two spirit people, but they're not coming. Why aren't they coming? Find out why go ask them. Maybe there is a very specific barrier that they said, nah, we don't want to participate. Yeah. So that's, figure out what that is and figure out how to break down that barrier. And what can we, I are, we are everywhere. So yeah. we should be at your meeting, right? There's so many of us. Yeah. There are in your in the communities, wherever you're at. I mean, there's our relatives who are out there, you know, yeah. and you know, and myself too, is personally is like now what 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 do I need to bring them our relatives to the, the table, bring them to the meeting, bring them into the room, and how can I make that space safe? Yes. We're gonna make that space safe. You know, what do I need to do? And, um, and if they don't feel safe, why? What am I doing? And really taking a look at that. Hey, AC, I, um, I got to ask you this, though. I got to ask you this, man. Is that, um, you know, the, the rates of suicide and, and, and self-harm is really high amongst our, our, our gay LGBTQ two-spirit uh, relatives, you know, and um, we just talked about resiliency, you know, and um, what can you say to those who might just be on that edge, you know, that edge might be uh, harming themselves, um, you know, or even consider in, and in their existence, you know, and what is it that that can be yeah. said to them, you know, and they might be, they might be here listening right now, or maybe a, a, a relative, auntie, uncle, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa might be listening in right now. You know, what is it that we can yeah. get told, you know, what can you share with them? Those not, yeah, those numbers are, are, are too high. You know, one, one death is, is one death too many. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. And, and I've lost friends to suicide. I lost a brother to suicide. Um, it, it's, it's painful to, to be left behind that way too. Um, but I also know it's painful to be the one considering that. Yeah. And um, man, you, you are valuable. You are loved. You are worthy. You... Um, you're not, Ooh, a, you're not alone. Powerful emotions coming up here. Yeah. Um, there, you know, we can say, oh, you know, call the, the, the Trevor hotline or call this hotline or whatever. But at the point that you're considering those options, um, you're, you're feeling really alone. And if we can reach out to people and support them before they feel that alone, um, we're gonna lose fewer people. The more that we can um, learn ourselves to be accepting, the more accepted people will feel. Um, but, you know, if that's you right now, if that's what you're thinking, um, you are sacred and you belong here and I am personally carving out space for you to be here. So please stay here and join me and help me with this work because as each one joins us, we become stronger and that's what matters, we'll be together. 
You know, there's, there's, um, hey, thank you, AC, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for those words. And I hope uh, those of you who are out there um, heard that, you know, heard their, that. And that's just, there's, there's so many, you know, more ways to reach out. Um, and I like this, um, I saw this quote someplace and, and uh, it really stuck with me. It's like, uh, our struggles, our struggles are somebody's blueprint for survival. Our struggles are somebody else's blueprint for survival. You know, and so those who are struggling right now, you know, just, you know, just hang in there and get support uh, in whatever ways, you know, and just you're, you are valuable and you're not alone in this struggle. But I just know that one day somebody is going to come up to you with those same struggles and be asking you, you know, help. What do I need to do? And you'll be able to share your story because your struggles and your story will be that blueprint for them. Yeah. For them. Yeah. I've had plenty of, of amazing and beautiful joys, you know, holding my first child for the first time, holding my first grandchild for the first time. Um, beautiful things have happened in my life. Um, and those moments are, are beautiful, but brief, mm. you know, the child grows up. Um, but it reminds me that in my darkest times, when things are just, when I think they can't get worse, um, that those times too will also be brief in the moment, just like it felt like everything to hold my child my first child for the first time that 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 feeling it was the entire world nothing existed but that right that's an intense beautiful moment um when you're considering checking out that's an intense moment too mm. and it does feel like the entire world and that's it nothing else exists if you can get past that and realize that that is a moment and ahead there's going to be beautiful moments and maybe your beautiful moment doesn't involve a grandbaby some people aren't that's not their their thing right yeah 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 um, but it's going to be something else and it and i promise you it's going to be big and beautiful and nothing will exist but that moment when it happens so hang in there for those moments so I got to ask you this too. I mean, we're talking about those moments, you know, and it sounds like you've had that moment. It sounds like you've had that moment and you said, you know, and you've, and you've made it through that moment and here you are. Here you are. And so, um, yeah. Have you had that moment? I've had so many moments. <laughs> um, you know, where you just I, wanted to, I've, where you just wanted to check out, and that was it. You know, but yeah, you, yeah, you're yeah. Here. You know, um, I've had those moments, uh, like where where I I considered maybe th this is where where I should go with this. Like, there's no real hope for me for the future. There's mm. no real um, plan. There's no path. I can't see out of this. Um, and then I, I've had, I've had horrible moments where I, I've buried some of my children oh. and there's no, um, it, it, it is so upside down for a parent to bury a child, right? Nobody wants to bury a family member period, but, um, those moments were extended periods of time for me where it was months um, that I, honestly, I don't even remember those months. Like it comes as such a shock and it's, it's another one of those really intense moments and nothing else exists, but, but that, cause it's so intense. Um, and I never thought I would smile again. Hmm. Um, I never thought I would feel joy again how could I like they took my baby boy right 
Um, he was 19. And how, how, would, how could I go on? How could I literally physically take another step? Uh, how could I live with, without him? And, and I'm here today, many, you know, many years later, um, and I'm alive and I have, I, I did smile. I remember the first tiny moment of joy I felt quite a few months after my son had died. I went to the grocery store with uh, my other children and one of my boys is, he's a prankster and a jokester and I swear this child was born laughing. <laughs> um, and he was just being himself in the grocery store. And yeah. he said or did something. I don't remember what it was, but he said or did something that was outrageously funny. And the other kids started laughing. And I started laughing. And I looked up and I noticed that I, we lived in a small town. Everybody knew that, that my son had passed away, right? And I looked up and I looked around and there was all these people looking at me. And my body felt like a flood from my head all the way down, a flush of shame. How mm. could I feel joy? How dare I feel joy when my son was dead? In the midst of this grief. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, this, this is how, how grief takes over. But we can work our way through these things. And, and I did. I went home and I felt terrible. I didn't speak all the way home as I was driving. Um, but here we are you know, years later, more than a decade later, and I have had those moments of great, great joy. But had you told me in the moment when I'm standing in the grocery store and I'm feeling intense shame that I, I had bothered to laugh, I'm not sure I would have believed you. Yeah. Um, but there was somebody by my side who went home with me you know, somebody who was checking in with me, quite a few somebody's are checking me, you know, the, the, the widow next door convinced me that she couldn't drive anymore. It wasn't true, but she needed me to drive her to the other end of the island because she had to go to the bank and blah, blah, blah. She didn't need to go to the bank. She made up this whole story because I had locked myself in my house and I wasn't going anywhere and wasn't, you know, talking to anybody. And she was rightfully concerned for my mental health and my well-being. Yeah. And uh, so she figured out a way. She she played helpless, and and you know, sometimes like that's how we break through. And that was a breakthrough. Uh, I nearly crashed her new car, but um, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we, it it was a matter of I went to shift, and it and it wasn't that kind of vehicle. And so I hit the brake, thinking I was hitting the clutch, and I was like, oh Jesus. <laughs> and we came to you know a screeching halt on the freeway, which you don't want to do, but. Um, you know, it took months for me to get beyond that. Yeah. It, it's not a magic moment where, oh, wow, I laughed. Now I feel better. We're moving forward. No, it took years. Yeah. It took years of good medicine and a lot of hard work on my part. And that good medicine takes time. That's, you know, I was out in, in for me, it was out being in the woods and hiking and, and being with other people who could, um, experience joy and it was okay with them that I wasn't laughing and smiling for a while. Mm -hmm. And eventually I was able to, without feeling such pain and shame, um, they were there for me. We've got a surround community. We've got to be there for people. Um, and it's hard if we don't know that they're suffering, but we should always ask, keep asking, what are your struggles? What can I help you with? Just checking in with them. Yeah. Just checking in with them. You know, it's like you said, we're all good. We're, we're good medicine. You know, and uh, um, Robert Johnston, who's with the Native Wellness Institute, he always talks about too, is that we're all, we are all walking um, medicine pouches. Yeah. We're all walking, living, breathing medicine pouches. Medicine. We are medicine. You know, in our LGBTQ community, our relatives, uh, two spirit relatives, um, I just want, I want to say too is that you are medicine. You are medicine, you know, for the soul, for the spirit, for this world, for this world. You know, and even though you might be on the edge, whatever it is, just you are medicine. 
And like uh, AC was talking about, it's like, you know, it's like, okay, you'll break through it. I mean, just like you had that breakthrough. And myself, who who can be an ally, because I never know. I never know what what my effect might be in being that ally as well. Hey, everybody, thank you so much. Um, I just want to check in with a few people. We have a few people. I saw uh, Danny on here. Uh, hey, hey, brother, good to see you. You know, Stephen, um, thank you for uh, attending here, you know, and uh, um, Sade, I think it is. I may be, I may be saying it wrong, you know, and, and just please, you know, forgive me for that. Thank you for, for, for viewing in here and, um, and coming on and, uh, and joining our chat, our conversation here. Jen, it's uh, thanks for coming on, you know, and, and with all that too, I just want to say is like, thank you all for uh, uh, tuning in and to, uh, um, you know, to share this with other people, share those who, who, who may be on that edge, you know, and how can we celebrate this month of, 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 of Pride Month, of Pride Month, you know? And again, um, as we're coming to a close, uh, AC, you know, it's like celebration, you said that we were we're in a, earlier. You said that things are are, are still opening up, and we, we haven't gotten to the regular celebrations, you know. But but still, we're celebrating, you know, because here we are, here we are, you know. And what are some ways that just in your own home and your own you know your own setting that you can just like just celebrate uh, and uh, and and acknowledge, you know, whatever that is, you know. And again, um, yeah. Yeah, and we're hanging our flags and we're checking in with our friends. I know that um, Pride Northwest um, usually they do a parade every year, and then last year got canceled because yeah. pandemic, right? Um, but they're they're doing the parade this year, except um, I've been on the peripheral, so I don't have all the details. But apparently, they did it at the racetrack, and so the vehicles went around and they uh, just got the cameras out and did the video and they're I think they're releasing the video on June 20th uh -huh. I'm hoping I have that correct but I know that you can go to the pride northwest website and I, I believe it's pridenorthwest.org or you can go to their Facebook page um and and they'll have a list of events and things that are going on in the community as well so yeah check it out Right on. Q Center. Right on. Q Center is going to be doing a whole bunch of uh, art shows with Native and Black folks that, you know, we're going to bust out here with our art and show it off. <laughs> cool, cool. So any last, any last words, any last, uh, you know, suggestions or any last uh, um, sharing that you'd like to, like to, you know, just to offer the people any last words of medicine that you like to offer the people out there or, or who are listening yeah so native wellness institute has a two-spirit support group that meets on monday nights i think we might be taking a little break at some point this summer but um check in with that and know that you are valuable and you are loved and i love you and i i can't wait to see your faces in person soon. I'm a big hugger. Come up to me. Give me a hug. Um, elbow high five. Whatever works for you. You know. <laughs> I know. I see. I, we've been on these here support groups. You know, we've been on on a men's support group and you know, and gatherings and things like that. I can't wait to see you, man. Can't wait. I to know. See I've been you. looking at your face for a year on my screen. <laughs> I know. Look at all this stuff. I like just say, let it go, and you know, and. and <laughs> You know everything. Hey, everybody. Um, this is Gene Tagaban. I have a, a relative here, AC, and we're we're celebrating Pride Month today uh, with the Native Wellness Institute. And next week we will also be uh, having a panel, having a panel on uh, uh, of several people. And I think AC is going to facilitate that and be asking questions. And who might be on that panel? Maybe uh, who are, who are you hoping to be on that panel? So we're going to hopefully have uh, a variety of two-spirit folk who live um, not just in the Portland area, but outside that area as well. 
Um, I don't want to say any names just in case they can't make it. Right. Yeah. Um, But they're, they're wonderful. All of them are wonderful, wonderful folks. I've sat in community with them and worked on projects with them and they're amazing, um, beautiful people. So definitely tune in. Awesome. Um, And I was like thinking it'd be great to have a panel of parents. Oh yeah. Parents of, of, uh, of, of LGBTQ, you know, two spirit, you know, it'd be great to have a panel and it's like their experience with this as well, you know. Yeah. Because I know That's there's a lot. Great idea. There's I know there's a lot of parents out there who just to just, what do I do? What do I say? You know, or even like how do I act? And yeah. you know, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I want to support them and love them and everything, but but I don't know. And so much of yeah. it is you gotta ask the question is like I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And so, um, and so anybody, everybody out here, thank you again, uh, Dean. This is Navajo Nation Pride Parade and the Showcase on June 19th in Window Rock, Arizona, Navajo Nation Council Chamber. Right on. Hey, Dean, thanks for uh, putting that on and, um, and posting that as well. Holy smokes. I could hear uh, on my, my microphone here. I just, I got my window wide open. And so uh, just like traffic out there, motorcycles are driving by and, and everything. And so anybody else who has any um, other celebrations out there, maybe uh, just share them with other people because, you know, and, and uh, um, so that we can celebrate this, this, this month, you know, and I don't want to just say this month and it's, it's a, it's a year long celebration. Yeah. We're, we're 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 here all the time. So. Here all the time, not just not yeah. just a month, not just a month. It we're you know it's a it's a year long celebration, just like they have like a Native American month. You know, it's like ah, oh, so, no, no, this is a year long. This is a lifetime. This is yeah. not not even a lifestyle. This is just a way of beingness, a way of beingness, and so um. Mm-hmm. Last words as we close here. Thank you all for coming on. In fact, uh, yep, we're still here. Thank you so much, uh, Native Owners and AC. Thank you for being on and and thanks and for having your, me. Your presence, and I look forward to having this conversation again, man. And uh, and so blessings, 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 Native Owners Institute, uh, Power Hour. Thank you for tuning in again. Gonachish, thank you so much. Until next time, uh, be wellness and be blessed. Uh-huh.